name is Ronnie Decker. I'm a registered nurse and this is Nursing Analysis. Today we will be continuing with the topic from the last video, Infection Control. If you remember, we began by talking about medical and surgical asepsis. And if you also remember, asepsis is the absence of illness producing microorganisms. And we must remember that hand hygiene is the primary preventative behavior for asepsis. Medical asepsis was also talked about in our last video and this refers to the use of techniques to reduce the number, growth, and spread of microorganisms. These techniques are collectively known as the clean technique. Today we will start by discussing surgical asepsis and the sterile field. Surgical asepsis refers to the use of precise practices to eliminate all microorganisms from an object or area and to prevent contamination. This technique is known as the sterile technique. Let's now discuss the practices that maintain a sterile field. We must know that prolonged exposure to airborne microorganisms can make sterile items non-sterile. We must avoid sudden movements, refrain from touching supplies, and avoid coughing, sneezing, or talking over a sterile field. We must also advise our patients to avoid these same actions when near a sterile field. We must also include only sterile items in our sterile field. The packaging's outer wrapper will have an outer edge or border that is approximately one inch. This one inch area is the only non-sterile portion of the wrapper. We utilize this one inch area to position the field on the table surface. We grasp this one inch border before applying our sterile gloves. We must discard any sterile items that come into contact with this border. When handling sterile items, remember, we must have on sterile gloves. Now let's focus on the accepted sterile area in relation to the body. This would be the chest to the waist. Any object above the chest or below the waist is considered no longer sterile. This includes our hands. Just remember, sterile materials may touch only sterile surfaces or materials. Any contact with non-sterile materials at any time contaminates the sterile areas. We must also recognize that microbes can move by gravity from a non-sterile item to a sterile item. This is why we must never reach across or above our sterile field. We must never turn our back on a sterile field and all added objects onto a sterile field must be added at a minimum of six inches above the field. Any sterile non-waterproof wrapper that comes into contact with moisture becomes non-sterile by what is called a wicking action that will allow the microbe to travel rapidly from a non-sterile surface to the sterile surface. We must keep all surfaces dry and discard any sterile packages that are torn or have punctures or that become wet. Let's now discuss some nursing interventions for working with a sterile field. We must first select a clean area that is above the waist and is level to begin out setup of our field. 
we must inspect all sterile packages to ensure their sterility. Are they dry? And are they protected? How about the expiration date? If a chemical type test is utilized, the appropriate color must also be observed. We must also check to make sure an appropriate waste receptacle is nearby. Before starting our procedure, we must first wash our hands. We will open the packaging per the manufacturer's directions. We will slip the package onto the center of the workspace with the top flap of the wrapper opening away from the body. We will grasp the tip of the top flap of the package and with an arm positioned away from the body, we will unfold the top flap away from the body. We will then open the side flaps using the same hand for the same side of the flap. Right hand for the right flap and left hand for the left flap. We then grasp the last flap and turn it down toward the body. We can now discuss additional sterile packages in relation to our sterile field. We will open all packages next to our sterile field. We will place all packages that will be used last, furthest from the sterile field, and open these packages first. Hold the bottom edge with one hand and pull back on the top flap with the other hand. We will add items directly to the sterile field at a minimum height of 6 inches. Pulling the two surfaces of the package apart and then dropping the contents onto the sterile field. Remember, when pouring solutions, we must first open and place the bottle cap face up on a clean not sterile surface. We will hold the bottle with the label in the palm of the hand as to prevent the solution from running down the label. We must remember to pour at least one to two mLs of the solution into a receptacle. We must also not splash when pouring the liquid and never touch the bottle to the site. discuss donning sterile gloves. We will don the gloves using the following method. When opening the wrapper covering that covers the gloves, we will handle the outside of the wrapper after washing our hands. We will open the package in the same manner as we discussed earlier in this video. Once open, we make sure the cuff side of the glove is pointing towards the body. Using the non-dominant hand, we will pick up the dominant hand glove by grasping the folded bottom edge of the cuff and lifting it up and away from the wrapper. We will pull the glove onto the dominant hand by the cuff of the glove. With the now sterile gloved dominant hand, we will place the fingers on the inside cuff of the non-dominant glove and lift it off and away from the wrapper. Place the non-dominant hand into it. When both hands are gloved, you may adjust the fingers by bridging the hands. It is very important to understand, when donning sterile gloves, the trick is to leave the thumb anchored to the hand. When people extend the thumb, they always have the tendency to pincer grasp and this will cause the sterile item to no longer be sterile. So keeping the thumb anchored to the hands will prevent this grasp. Now let's discuss doffing. Doffing sterile gloves or clean gloves. We need to grasp the outer part of one glove at the wrist, pulling the glove over the fingers and into the hand that is still gloved. Then place the non-gloved hand into the inside of the cuff and pull that soiled glove off so that it is inside out 
and only the clean part is exposed. Discard the gloves into the appropriate receptacle. Well, this completes the educational portion of this video, and now it is time for our Rhyme Time Review. Today we will gather and hear my speech on medical asepsis and sterile technique. Medical asepsis can reduce the number amount. Sterile technique eliminates all and there is none to count. When setting up a sterile field, we must know when given time, microbes can grow. We must remember to never move fast and wait until any coughing or sneezing has passed. When opening a sterile package, remember the order and the non-sterile edge, which is the one inch border. This big border begins the mission so we can place our field in proper position. We must remember our body's sterile space, below the chest and above the waist. We must also teach to never reach across the field we must yield. When adding items, the forceps we pinch, keeping the height above the sixth inch. Set the cap face up on the table and cover your palm over the label. In the receptacle, one to two mLs we will pour. Do not worry, there is still plenty more. We must use all of our ability to ensure proper sterility. Constant inspection will prevent infection. And if ever a question, use detailed detection and make a correction. Thank you for taking the time to learn with Nursing Analysis. Your support is always greatly appreciated. Please like and subscribe to continue to help us grow. And as always, comments and suggestions for any future videos are welcome. And thanks again to Medical Prep and the classes of RN47. 49 and 50. Remember, it's not a matter of if, it's only a matter of when. Thank you very much. At Medical Prep Institute, we prepare our graduates for the multiple roles that nurses must balance. We provide thorough clinical training via exceptional classroom, lab, and simulation instruction. Our program teaches student nurses how to plan, perform, and evaluate patient care. Our students learn how to be an advocate for their patient and act as a liaison between physicians and other healthcare workers. Come join us and let's make a difference in the lives of our patients.